What's up guys, welcome back to Magnus Tech Talk. And today I've got the Logitech Combo Touch and the Magic Keyboard for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. We're gonna do a little comparison, give you the pros and cons of each keyboard and uh, let you guys decide which one you think's better. So, let's get into it. Both of these keyboards do pretty much the same thing. Uh, both of them have uh, really, really good keyboards and really, really good trackpads. And they offer a good um, sort of hybrid computer experience for the iPad Pro. So let's get into the pros and cons. Let's get it kicked off with the Logitech Combo Touch. First things first, the sort of textile-like finish of the of this case is very very good nearly looks like a fabric it feels like a pair of jeans if i'm being truthfully honest but it's very very it's very very nice sort of feel to it and it sort of gives the impression that it is going to be you know quite hard wearing and that finishes throughout on the front of the keyboard there as well so as you can see you know it's right here along the trackpad and there's still a bit here as, as well above the keyboard you know, so it's a good finish. I, I do like it, and uh, I think the color color scheme is quite nice. The keyboard itself, um, it's quite similar to the Magic Keyboard. Uh, the keyboard's backlit. Uh, it has the likes of the emoji key and that sort of thing, which uh, it's a great, it's a good typing experience. Uh, it really is. But what it has, the um, Magic Keyboard doesn't have is the raw function keys along the top. And I think I'm with everybody in agreement with that the Magic Keyboard really needs those function keys. Just using this uh, on this iPad, I'll be honest, has been fantastic. Uh, the lock and the home buttons, especially, are so useful. The volume controls, the media controls, play, pause, next, previous. The uh, brightness buttons for the keyboard, the, an on-screen keyboard button as well. Brightness up and down. It's a no-brainer. These should have been on the Magic Keyboard. Top marks for that one. Trackpad as well. The trackpad is a little bit bigger than the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard. A trackpad that isn't sort of restricted to where you can click. You can literally press and click anywhere and it will register on the trackpad. So that's also a really good feature. The good thing about this is because this, connects, this case connects in through the docking connector in the back. So this keyboard is in Bluetooth. And this keyboard connects directly to the case through that three pin connector in which the case connects to directly to the iPad. So there's no Bluetooth lag or anything like that there to worry about with that, which is great. The next good thing about this keyboard is the angles. So as you can see, this part of the case can tilt all the way back like so which is great. And if you're going to be doing a bit of typing or if you want to do a bit of writing with the Apple Pencil, it's great for that and it gives you that option as well. So you get good good tilt options with that. And again, what I do like about this as well is keyboard is detachable. And one of the cool little things I find with this, rather than, if you just want to use the iPad on its own, you can just detach the keyboard Flip it round, connect it in, and you can fold the keyboard into the back like that. And then it gives you a nice little sort of resting pad there for the iPad. I like that, that's pretty That's pretty cool. I like that feature, so definitely. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, I like that. And it also keeps it compact then as well. So you're not having to disc disconnect the keyboard and set it down somewhere and hope that it'll be okay and nothing happens to it. So I like that. And then the next thing is with the case itself, the case provides really, really good protection for the iPad. As you can see, the case covers all of the bezels across the iPad, apart from the gap at the top for the Apple Pencil. Um, so it's protected on all angles. And that's also a good feature. Um, there's a good bumper there as well. So accidents happen. If something were to happen, iPad were to fall, you've got a bit of protection here as well. And that's always a good thing. So the pros for the Magic Keyboard. So the Magic Keyboard, again, similar to the Logitech, uh, the keyboard on this is fantastic. Keyboard and trackpad itself, I will go on record and say, 
These are literally as good as trackpads and keyboards on a MacBook. Uh, they're, they are that good. It's one of the best keyboard typing experiences I've personally ever used and I can't fault it whatsoever. Same goes for the trackpad. I do a lot of my editing on my iPad Pro and I use my I use the trackpad mostly for a lot of my editing. I think that indicates just how good the trackpad is on this keyboard. Um, another good thing about it is, and it's the only good thing I will say about the finish on this iPad, this silicone finish, when it's on the when it's on your desk, means your it means your iPad doesn't really move around too much. It, it can't it can't be moved very very easily. It gives you a good secure um, feel on the desk. So I'll be honest, that's probably the only positive I'm going to say about this finish. Um, so yeah. Also, the good thing about this as well uh, is that if you need to disconnect the iPad. It's as easy as that. You just lift it off. With that magnetic design, you just lift it and use it. When you're done, just put it back. Easy. Easy. It's so good. And as well, ang viewing angles on this iPad, I personally for me, I find are very, very good. You've got a good range of tilt options there. And I'm not sure <laughs> if anybody else does this. Um, if you do, please let me know down in the comments below so that I'm not alone. But I have found myself many a night lying in bed, doing a little bit of editing or doing a little bit of checking emails or, or whatever. I'll lie down flat in the bed and I will literally rest this on my chest. And as you can see, you've got a pretty good viewing angle there when it's sitting like that. It works a dream. So, I don't know. I, surely I'm not the only one. If, if I'm not... Let me know in the comments down below because, um, yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> Let's get on to the, the party piece of this case. The party piece is the USB-C pass-through charging. This is one of the most useful features on any accessory that I have used in a long, long time. Simply put, I can plug this up, iPad in to the keyboard. Keyboard will charge the iPad. I can work away. I can plug in accessories. I can plug in my card reader. I can plug in a USB drive. I can plug in a display. Not that I would. 4.3 ratio. Any of those sorts of accessories that work off USB-C slash Thunderbolt, this port is free for that. That's a great feature and that is one of the areas where the design of this keyboard shines so well. So that's the big party piece for me. That's the thing I find boosts productivity and the fact being as well, I could have that sitting on my desk, plugged into the charger, uh, plugged into the port on the keyboard case itself. I could be sitting working, doing something on the iPad and go, oh here, um, I'll quickly lift that off and take a photograph. I can just go boop, do, 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 do. Do what I need to do. Bop, 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 bop. Done. Okay. And we're back in the game. Connect it back in. It's back on charge. Just like that. Simple. And also, it's a good, sleek, slim package. There is a bit of weight to it, but um, you'll not find many options out there which are as slim and as sleek as this. So, yeah, that's, that's the end of the the, uh, the pros for the Magic Keyboard. We have to get there eventually. So let's start with the cons. And the first con for me with the, with the Combo Touch, look how thick it is. Like it's a, it's a beefy boy. <laughs> it really is. It's a real beefy boy. Um, obviously um, with the, the case uh, providing that extra bit of protection there is quite a bit of thickness to the keyboard itself it is noticeably thicker than the Magic Keyboard so that is maybe the trade off that you'll get between the two in terms of size definitely it's a lot thicker and it's a, it is noticeably heavier as well second um, what I have noticed with this um, might not be a deal breaker for a lot of people but uh, what I have noticed with this, um, this is the 2018 iPad Pro I have inside this case. And 
if you'll just notice. Obviously this was sort of designed with the M1 iPad in mind. So the likes of the speaker grills don't completely line up properly with the cutouts in the case. Now, I'll be honest, uh, I tested out the audio on this. Uh, uh, it doesn't really make that big of a difference to the audio quality. But if you have a wee bit of OCD like I do, I look at that and that upsets me a wee bit. So as you can see, the microphone holes on the side um, aren't covered up. So that's, that's, a good, that's a good thing. But there is a microphone in the bottom of the iPad and it is covered up by the docking connector, unfortunately. Um, did some testing with it. Doesn't really seem to make much of a difference, but thought I would mention it anyway. And then the other thing that I have found with it is this case, when you're using the keyboard, and if you're wanting to use it at any sort of an angle, it takes up a lot of space. I mean, it has a very, very large footprint when on your desk. So there's the sort of size of the keyboard itself. And then if I extend out the back, So that's maybe just like a normal viewing angle. So if we put an extra wee bit of tilt on it. It's near the width of me. Whew. And I'm a white boy. Um, just to compare. So there's the magic keyboard. And there's the combo touch. So the magic keyboard uses a lot smaller of a footprint. So it's maybe something to consider. But that's the only thing I find when I was using this, when I set it up on my desk and then I tried to give it an extra bit of tilt, um, I find then that I was running out of space. So, um, yeah, could be, it could be something. The last thing for me is when you're using this case, the only way you can charge the iPad is to plug, it, to plug your cable directly in to the iPad itself, which basically means you can't put, you can't use any other accessories while your iPad's charging. That could be a deal breaker for some people, some people, not so much. But the only other thing I will say is depending on the type of cable you have, if you have some aftermarket USB-C cables, they might not fit uh, in the case due to the, the cutout there for the port. Um, now, I've the cables I have tried are the OEM Apple cables that came with the iPad itself, and they do fit okay. Um, I do have a couple of aftermarket ones and they weren't really a great fit, you know, so that's maybe something to bear in mind as well. So yeah, I think that more or less covers the, uh, the cons for this. So, let's get on to the cons. Let's get on to the cons of the Magic Keyboard. Ah, that silicone finish. While I praised it earlier for it being able to sit at a desk and not have too much movement is literally the only good thing about the finish on this keyboard. Um, literally, I'm not sure how well the camera shows that up, but I cl literally cleaned this for the video. And it's literally only just been on this table, which was also cleaned. Look at, look at the state of it. It's a full time job keeping it clean. It's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. It picks up every little single thing. Like you could clean your hands 16 million times a day. It's not gonna make a difference. If you have the slightest little thing on your hand, this thing's gonna find it. So yeah, frustrating, frustrating. The next thing for me, um, I have mentioned it in uh, other videos as well. And I'm like a broken record, I really am. But the lack of function keys kind of ruins this keyboard for me. Um, I typically would have, that is typically the angle I would have the iPad in when I'm using it up in the case. I'm either sitting at my desk and this is the angle I use. And look at the space. There's no reason why there's no function keys on this. That's the biggest thing that Apple could have done. Maybe someday. The next thing is, while this keyboard is a nice, sleek and convenient option, it does have a, a really sleek, modern design. I do have a shoe with the iPad, bezels not being protected. I always have done, and until there's a, a good quality option, I always will. Because literally, like, put yourself, 
this is the, this is the scenario for me, right? You go and you buy a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, okay? Even the 256 gig model is 1100 pounds of a device. And if you need to do something on that device, I don't know about you, but the minute I lift this into my hand, I'm scared. The slightest drop, the slightest slip out of my hand, I'm gonna put a ding in that chassis. I'm probably gonna break that screen. And that would just ruin my day, if I'm being honest. I'm very, very mindful of that. Now granted, I, I don't have to do that too often, if I'm being honest. But there is always that occasion that I go to lift it out and then I hesitate because I'm like, mm, what if? And then, onto the final con. Negative. Bad thing. Call it what you will. This is too expensive. £350 for a keyboard case. Albeit, it's a fantastic accessory. And it is still one of the best accessories you can get for an iPad Pro. It's still too expensive. I mean, again, you're buying an iPad Pro 256, 256 gig model. That's 11, that's 1099, it's 1100 pounds. And then you need to add 350 pound for this. You can buy MacBook Airs cheaper than that. You can buy MacBook Airs cheaper than the iPad before you add a case. Something to consider something to consider that's my that's my comparison of these two keyboard cases now my honest opinion when it comes to typing experiences um they're much of a muchness in terms of the keyboards i would say that the magic keyboard does have the edge over the combo touch in terms of the keyboard the, the, the keyboard just has that extra little thing that makes you think it's a, it is a it is a sharp quality keyboard um, but that's not to say that the type of experience is bad on this combo touch. It's far from it. It was, it's, it's a fantastic keyboard. And with them function keys as well, it makes it that wee bit more appealing. Um, trackpads. The trackpad definitely is better on the Magic Keyboard. Again, not by much. But when I was doing a bit of editing on this, I just found that there was the odd little bit of lag with the trackpad on the combo touch. And it just wouldn't be quite as sharp as this. So that's just my honest opinion. Um, but again, there's not much separating the two of them in that sort of... There's, there's not much separating the two, to be honest. Viewing angles. You get a much better viewing angle with the combo touch. Um, but you do get a trade-off. It takes up a lot more space on your desk when you tilt it back more. Unless you take the, the, the keyboards off. Uh, you take the keyboard off. Uh, viewing angles. Um, the Magic Keyboard does have a good viewing angle. Um, good option for viewing angles. But you do get more options with the Combo Touch. So if you want to use the keyboard and tilt that screen back, you will get a much better viewing angle on this. Um, but it will come at a cost. It's, it will take up a much larger bit of space on your desk. So that's maybe something to consider if you're limit if you're working with a limited space. It's user preference there, to be honest. You do get you do get more protection with the combo touch for the iPad itself. So if you were to fold the keyboard up, flip the keyboard round, and you still have the bezels protected on the iPad itself, um, which is reassuring. So if you've got an expensive device and a really good display, you want to protect that. So that's a no-brainer for me. Um, but there is a trade-off of this. You um, only have one USB-C port and that's on the iPad itself. So if you're plugging a charger in while you're using it, you're not going to be able to plug in and else in. Whereas on the Magic Keyboard, you can plug your charger into the pass-through charging port on the keyboard case and then you'll have your USB-C slash Thunderbolt uh, for accessories so that's a very productive and useful thing so the long and short of it is there's not much separating the two of these apart from a few little bits of personal choice and whether or not you think the uh, magic keyboard is worth an extra 150 pound compared to this because to be honest that's the the deal breaker for this 
if you have a budget for uh, an accessory and 350 pound isn't in your budget well then it's combo touch all the way it's a no-brainer you've got all the functionality of the magic keyboard um, you've got that great typing experience you've got a good trackpad you've got good view and angles and you've got good protection for your iPad it's a no-brainer if you do have that budget magic keyboard you'll get a much smaller compact design you'll get pass through USB-C charging you'll get good view and angles you'll get that fantastic keyboard and trackpad it's a no-brainer um, so the, I'll be honest with you none of these are better than the other in my eyes it's simply down to what your budget stretch for. You know, both do have great pros, but they also do have drawbacks. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I think I covered everything on these two cases. If I haven't, leave me a comment down below and you know, give me your thoughts, opinions, experiences. Let me know how you got on and what you think is the better option for the iPad Pro. Um, is it the Combo Touch or is it the Magic Keyboard? Let me know. I want to know. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. That about covers it for this video, guys. Um, if you haven't already, like the video. Big thumbs up. Smash it. Um, really appreciate it. Helps me out on the channel. And if you haven't already, guys, hit that subscribe button. Um, it massively helps me out on the channel. And it helps you guys see when new content is uploaded to the channel. And that's always a good thing. If you like it, that is. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers!